Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. Our word for today, peace. Let's begin our service by standing and singing hymn number 67, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of blood. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, always at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's pray. Dear God, as we come to this place this morning, we pray that you will help us understand that we are mere men and that we have frailties in our hearts, minds, and bodies that cause problems in our relationships with others and you. We pray that you will teach us your word and that you will give us understanding and the will to follow you correctly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. And let's turn to hymn number 98, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new 
mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Amen. Now, at this time, Pam's going to come and bring a reading from Refuge for the Questioning Soul. Today's reading is entitled Refuge for the Questioning Soul, and the Bible verse is Psalm 62, 8. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. There are questions that we long to have answered by God and circumstances in our lives that leave us wondering about his goodness. As we pray, we try to rend the heavens for an answer that will make sense of our storm. What God desires most isn't the soul with the answer. It's the one laid bare before him in a perfect dance of trust, belief, and raw vulnerability. In that moment of emptiness before your maker, he will be your safe place. Pour out your heart to him and rest in his embrace because he is a refuge for even the most questioning soul. And the prayer is, God, I don't have answers for all the deep questions, but I know that you're a safe place for me to pour out my heart. I give you my questions and my fears, and I say yes to the peace of your presence. Amen. Our starting point Bible verse for today, Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who is our peace. You have given us such a blessing in him, and we are so thankful for Jesus, our Lamb of God, and his blood which cleanses us from all sin. Thank you for the path that you have given us to walk and the assurance that we have as we live our lives with you. We pray you will guide us in the way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When Adam and Eve sinned, they found out they were naked. They found out who was in charge. They found out they were responsible for their own bad decisions. They found out who did and did not know how to live a happy life. They found out how good she really had it. They found out how kept they were. They found out how protected they were. They had good health care. But now they were going to find out what it was like to live in turmoil. 
They disobeyed God and they were going to have to move. And God's people ended up as slaves to sin in Egypt. But hundreds of years before slavery in Egypt, God called Abram, also named Abraham, to be the father of a mighty nation. You can actually add the years of key people's birth in the Bible and determine when Abraham was born. And I want to make sure that you all understand this timeline that I've got here. This is when Adam was created. It's the year 0 a.m. on Omundo, the year of the world. And we can add up the years of all of the children and the children of the children and find out that Noah was born in 1656 a.m. 1656 years after Adam on a Monday. And then we can find out when Abraham was born. 1948 AM. And the Bible records that Abraham met someone named Melchizedek. And um, this is approximately a hundred years, a little bit over, or there, or not a hundred years, 30 to 50 years maybe, after Abraham was born and uh, he ran into Melchizedek on, on the timeline. God had given Abraham victory in a battle and he gave, Abraham gave God a tenth of the loot, the plunder. Genesis 14, 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Abraham gave Melchizedek God's tithe. In the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, Paul wrote, about Melchizedek. And the names are spelled different. Uh, in the Old Testament was Hebrews, and in the New Testament would have been Greek. Paul shows us that Melchizedek was a forerunner who showed us what Jesus was going to be, a priest of the Most High God. King of righteousness, a king of Salem, which is king of peace, because the word Salem means peace. 
Jesus doesn't have a beginning or an ending. A little bit later, God called Abraham to sacrifice his son, Isaac. And God shared details of another event in Abraham's life with us. You remember that God gave Abraham and Sarah a son, Isaac, and God called Abraham to sacrifice his son. The place where God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac was Mount Moriah. God stopped Abraham from sacrificing Isaac. He had him on the altar, he knife raised, and, and they, stopped, they stopped it. God provided a ram for Abraham to sacrifice. God did not require Abraham to kill his son, but God killed Jesus. He allowed him to be killed, his only begotten son for us on the same mount where God called Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Mount Moriah and Calvary are the same place. All of this happened before Moses. I want to point out what I've done here on this timeline. Okay. We have Genesis 1-1 is the beginning. It starts the story, and it's in Genesis, and it runs all the way up to the time of Moses, 2,300 and something years. This, this is all Genesis. And then, we begin Exodus. In his own time, God made a major adjustment. God moved in his story to take his part. God called Moses to save the Jews out of Egypt. God told Moses, you are with me. God told Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses delivered God's message. In Hosea 11.1, 1, God described what he did. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. They headed for Mount Moriah, Calvary, which is in the promised land, Israel the land of the messianic promise. Because God had told the serpent in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And the Messianic city, Jerusalem. In 1 Kings 11.36, God described what he was doing in Jerusalem. 
and unto his son will I give one tribe, that David, King David, my servant, may have a light alway before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. When Moses was leading Israel, God knew they would squander the peace that they had with him by disobeying him. But God would have his city. And God gave the world Jesus, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. But he showed us we need to find out what that means. For example, in Matthew 10, 34, Jesus said, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. God is offering peace, but it has to be on his terms. This is a picture of Jesus and the church that called out Pe Jesus' people who are going to come to defend Jerusalem, the city of peace from the nations. There will be war. In the message in scripture, we need to choose Jesus to choose peace. God has given us a savior from the curse that began with Adam and Eve. If you believe that God sent Jesus to die for the sins of man and want to accept him as your savior, pray this prayer. Dear God, I have sinned and I am sorry. I believe that you sent Jesus to save me from my sins. I want to accept Jesus as my savior and I want to be forgiven. I ask that you forgive me. In Jesus name I pray, amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we pray that you will guide us as we go into the world, that you will teach us how to teach others of your love and mercy. We pray that you will take the selfishness out of our hearts and show us how to give cheerfully. Thank you for all the patience you have shown us, and we pray that we will live lives that bless you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you.